Now, in this lecture, we're going to understand how to work with JWT token. We are going to understand how to generate the JWT token and authenticate the user. So, let's create a simple example to understand how this works. I'm going to create a new folder inside my mon series. Here, I'm going to create a new folder and I'm going to name it JWT. And I'm going to initialize this folder with npm package. So, I'm going to open my terminal and here I'm going to say cd JWT, clear the screen, and I'm going to say npm init hyphen y. So this will just initialize this JWT folder as npm package. Once I specify that, inside this JWT, you can notice I have package.json file. Inside this JWT, I'm going to install some node modules. So here I'm going to say npm i for install, and I'm going to install express, as well as I'm going to install node mod. When I press enter, I'm going to have both these modules inside my project. Once I have both these modules, let me just clear the screen and close this terminal. Inside this JWT, I'm going to create a new file and I'm going to name it client.js. That's upon you, you can specify any name to this file. Inside this file, I'm going to create a simple express application. So I'm going to just say here, constant express is equal to, and then I'm going to require the express module. And just down here, I'm going to say express app is equal to express and then I'm going to pass parenthesis. I'm going to create a simple instance of express application and just down here, I'm going to say constant port is equal to 3000. Just down here, I'm going to say app.get and for the root route, I'm going to specify request and response parameter and then I'm going to return a response with response.send method and I'm going to send login auth. Just down here, I'm going to say app dot listen and I'm going to listen this app on port 3000. So I'm going to pass here port variable and then I'm going to pass here a callback function to display a console message. So I'm going to say here console dot log and in the back tick operator, I'm going to say server is running on HTTP localhost and I'm going to pass my port name. So I'm going to pass my port variable here like this. Now let me save this file back to the package.json and let me add here a start command. So here I'm going to say start inside it. I'm going to say nodemon client.js. I'm going to specify this file name here client.js. Save this file. Open my terminal. Here I'm going to execute this start command. So I'm going to simply say here npm start. So this will just start the server on localhost 3000. When I open my browser, you can notice I'm going to have login auth. Now, once I have the basic Express application, let me add JWT inside it. Now, let's suppose this is your client React application running on port 3000. Now, what you need to do is you need to first import the JWT token inside this application. So you need to open your terminal. Let me just stop the development server and let me install a module called json web token so here i'm going to say npm i for install and i'm going to install json web token i'm going to install this module inside this client application once i have this module let me just start my development server again close this terminal and just out of that let me import my module at the top jwt and i'm going to just say here constant jwt is equal to then i'm going to require json web token if you want to work with JWT, you need to import this JSON web token module. Inside this module, you have some methods which you can use to validate or you can say authorize the user. Now, let's suppose you have a login form and user is going to specify their username and password in that form and click on the submit button. When the user click on the submit button, we're going to redirect the user on the login route. So for example, let's say if I create here a route called login. So I'm going to just say here app.post this is going to be a post method, HTTP method, because the user is going to post a data with the login form. So when the user posts some data, I'm going to get that data on the route login. And I'm going to just say here request and response. And I'm going to just call here. And inside it, I'm going to get the user input. To get that, I'm going to use the request body property. So here I'm going to say request dot body. And inside this body, I'm going to have my username and password of the user. To get that, I'm going to use the destructuring JavaScript feature. So I'm going to say here constant in the object like this. I'm going to pass here username and password. 
Now when I make a post request on this route, I'm going to create two variables in the body, which is username and password and pass value to it. Just out of that, I'm going to validate that value with the database values. So when the user specify their username and password in the input text boxes, I'm going to validate that username and password with the database value. So as you know, I don't have any database inside this file. So let me just create a simple array of database. So I'm going to create a simple constant variable at the top with the name user. I'm going to create a simple constant user variable. And inside that, I'm going to specify the username, password and role. Now let's suppose this is your database and you're going to get this database value in this route. Now what I'm going to do is, so here, what we're going to do is we're going to iterate over this database value and check whether the username and password is inside that database. So here I'm going to say users, I'm going to call this constant variable users, the database dot, and then I'm going to use find method. Inside this find, I'm going to specify callback function and specify parameter here. So I'm going to say here u, u for user, and inside this u, I have these objects. So this find method is going to iterate over this array and grab these object values inside this u variable. So once I have all these values inside this u variable, I'm going to just return here u dot username if it is equal to username, this username value. If the database value is equal to this input value and I'm going to use your add operator and then I'm going to say if u dot password if it is equal to password. If this database value is equal to this input password value then I'm going to return that object using this find method and I'm going to store that inside a variable. So here I'm going to say constant user. So if the find method is going to find the username and password inside your database it will going to return that object to this variable to this user variable and just down here I'm going to simply say if we have value inside this user variable I'm going to execute this if statement and inside this if statement I'm going to generate the access token as you know once we find the user in the database I'm going to generate a token so the user can access the restricted data let me just create a simple command and say generate an access token so just down here I'm going to say constant access token is equal to JWT I'm going to call the JWT object as you can notice here at the top I have this object and I'm going to call a method of it which is sign sign method is going to generate the JWT token so I'm going to say here sign and then I'm going to pass here a payload as I said earlier payload may be anything that may be your username password or any data so for now I'm going to specify here my username so let me first create here a key username and specify value to it I'm going to specify value user dot username just for that if you want you can add additional metadata here as well for example let's say you want to add this role as well inside this payload you can do that as well you can just simply specify here comma and then specify here role and then specify here user dot role that's it just after this object just specify here comma and then specify here access token secret now when jw to generate the access token he need the secret key the secret key may be anything so at the top here i'm going to create a simple secret key so i'm going to say here secret key and i'm going to say here constant access token secret is equal to and in the single quote i'm going to just specify your access token secret now this is just a simple string right if you want you can add here random hex value as well that's upon you this is just a simple secret key once i have my secret key i'm going to specify that here as a second argument to this jwt sign method so i'm going to specify here access token secret and just for that once i have that secret just down here inside this if statement i'm going to return my response so i'm going to say here response.json i'm going to return the response of the type json and inside an object i'm going to simply say here access token i'm going to return this access token variable so this method is going to create access token for this user and specify that to this access token variable and i'm going to return that access token with this response now just for that if i don't have any user i'm going to specify here else statement and inside this else i'm going to response and send 
a message inside a double quote i'm going to say here username or password incorrect if your username and password is not correct you will get this message now let me save this file and open my postman api testing tool i'm going to simply make a post request on this login route you know that we have the login route here i'm going to make a post request on it so i'm going to simply say here post on login and in the body section i'm going to create a two variables username and password and as you know we have this username john and i'm going to have a password 123 admin i'm going to specify that here inside this body so the user can successfully log in let me first specify the incorrect password here and show you the result first so if i just specify here admin and if i click on the send button you can notice i'm going to get an error message oops i think i misspelled something yeah i just forget to add here url encoded statement so i'm going to say here app dot use and i'm going to say here express dot url encoded and specify here extended false so this statement is going to pass the body to this body property and then i can access the value of the username and password now once i done that let me save this file and now let me click on the send button when i click on it you can notice i'm going to have here a message username oops i think i misspelled here i just add here or if i click on the send button i'm going to get here message username or password incorrect and when i specify the valid password here and when i click on the send button you can notice this is going to generate an access token and using it we can authorize the user so in the next lecture i'm going to show you how you can authorize the user using this access token